Let's talk Super Bowl. It's the biggest event of the year on TV in which billions and millions and a lot, a lot, a lot of dollars are spent. Just think that Domino's sells 80% more pizza this Sunday than any other day. People supposedly drink 325 million gallons of beer. That's a lot of beer. That's like 439 Olympic swimming pools filled with beer. But more than all of that put together, it's a celebration of capitalism, so yay! We're gonna analyze it. People actually watch the Super Bowl to see the ads, and some, some watchers are actually more interested in the ads than the actual game, which is why they're so expensive. They cost $5 million for 30 seconds of advertisement. That's like $5 million burned in 30 seconds. And if you want to have a solid marketing campaign, you're probably gonna end up spending about $10 million if you count like promotions and including social media advertisement. That's $10 million for one ad. So you better believe it that these are well thought through ads. Anyways, what really caught my attention, which is why I'm making this video, is the brainwashing and the underlying influence that Basically, what these companies are trying to do is manipulate their image so that you think that they're more socially responsible, more eco-friendly than they truly are. Think of all the stamps, biological, fair trade, that's called greenwashing, and these ads are doing it on a whole other level. That's right, you gotta wake up, sheeple. Alright, let's just look at some ads. The first one I wanted to show is from Toyota. It starts out all good. You know, he's going out of the church, into his Toyota car. So basically, this whole ad is about like a rabbi, a priest, and an imam, and a Buddhist monk, how they all meet and go in this car and go watch a football game. And it's trying to leverage the whole coexist movement and how a religious group should just join together and stop fighting. Can I change the music? No. Let's just move on to the next ad. Alright, great. Now we have another Super Bowl ad on top of the ad that we're going to watch. And we're going to go ahead and skip that one. This is a Verizon ad. It, it's really touching and it does and like you hear the music and what they're saying and it's basically a celebration of first responders but at the same time it has some underlying message which is that you use phone networks to make emergency calls which basically means that they're saying that without us, we're, without Verizon who has the best coverage in the US, imagine how many more people would die because they wouldn't be able to call first responders. But it, it is good that they're celebrating first responders, but it's not just to celebrate them. They do have some underlying agenda. The reason why these ads are so expensive and why they put so much effort into them, it's because it's a whole different target that from usual TV consumers. Basically, the people who watch the Super Bowl usually don't even watch TV at all, which means that it's a completely untapped market for video ads. It's also usually millennials, which are more tech savvy and harder to reach with ads, especially on video and when they're actually paying attention. What these companies think is that millennials care more about the social, which is actually true, but they're not really trying to change the company itself, they're just trying to change the perception of the brand. And companies have to attack millennials. They have to win millennials over because they're gonna be soon the people with the most spending power, which means that they're the number one group they're gonna go after. Then Toyota had an ad about the odds of winning a Paralympic gold medal, which are almost a billion to one. Then Kraft highlighted the problem of the pressure that people feel to be perfect, which I'm sure it's a problem that's on the top of the minds of the executives of this company that's worth like 90 billion dollars. I'm sure they really care about the pressure of how people want to be perfect. T-Mobile tackled diversity with the, an ad with babies, which is a pretty typical ad that wants to make you feel good. Then Blackshirt, which is like a still unreleased media brand, is actually still hasn't launched and it's launching with this whole premise of like uh, be celebrated, not tolerated. So it's, it's actually launching the whole brand with this premise and with this social aspect to it as, it as its core, which really says something to how important companies believe the social aspect is nowadays. 
And then this one I really liked. It's Hyundai brought these disrupting technology. They call them hope detectors. Instead of metal detectors, they detect if people have hope. Which they're gonna be implemented, you know, in every airport from now on. And if anyone has any hope of being able to enjoy a nice trip, you know, it's gonna be taken away completely by the TSA. They're gonna force you to squeeze every last bit of toothpaste out of the tube. You know, then they're gonna make you, then they're gonna inspect it and see that it's just toothpaste and they're gonna make you put it back in the tube while you have like a bunch of businessmen waiting behind you, pressuring, holding their khakis up, waiting to p get their belts off the like metal detector machine. But actually hope detect, hope detector or hope, it's a whole campaign that highlights Hope on Wheels, which is a charity run by Hyundai, which donates $10 million to research for cancer every year, which is pretty good. That's a lot of money. But just think that this over one minute long ad costs $10 million in itself. Instead of running this ad, they could have actually doubled the budget of donations for cancer research that they do on a yearly basis. And they say with each Hyundai, you donate some money to cancer research. Yes, but it's a very, very, very small percentage of what the company makes. Then we have this beer ad, which is called I Like Beer, which thankfully highlights how beer is healthy. I think that's what they're trying to do. They show people who do sports and who enjoy, who like beer, but do sports, which sports and beer aren't really linked. Unless you, I guess, you think of people watching sports, drinking beer, but people don't do sports while drinking beer. It's not a healthy drink, let's be honest. Ram did the very honorable thing of using a Martin Luther King speech as uh, words, as the background, like sound of this ad, which is really great that they're gonna use, you know, the words of such a great man to advertise for pickup trucks. It's really amazing. find this sort of advertising in which like companies want to flaunt their values, like how good they're doing, they're changing the world, they're the best people ever, quite funny really, because in the end of the day, what companies do is turn a profit. Now that consumers with environmental concerns account for a huge part of the spending power, about 80% of Americans do consider our company's environmental policies before buying a product from them. We are being flooded with these ads about social issues and environmental issues, but really these companies are now working so hard to actually change the things. They're working equally hard, actually I think a lot harder to just show that they're changing them. Which is what they think that matters, really. Because in, in truth it does, because people do believe it. And if you're not thinking too much about it, and if you, if you don't have the time to do the research behind what an ad says, you're gonna believe it, and you're gonna think that company is doing great things. I mean, it's still better than nothing. I mean, these companies are still donating money and helping other people. It's just quite ridiculous how they want to show off about it. It's, it shows that at the core of their motives, it's not that. But I guess in some way, capitalism and the, like, the invisible hand is swaying the markets a little bit. But it's not working as well as we would want to. Consumers who think that they're actually doing good by picking the brands based on their green and how env environmentally friendly they are, they're not really outsmarting the people who run these companies. In marketing courses, they teach you all the time about green marketing, social marketing, and how to exploit these movements. It's actually very easy to persuade customers to buy certain products based on their sustainability or environmental qualities. If you're gonna make a green marketing campaign, you should concentrate on having a clear, short message and one that everybody can get behind and everybody agrees with which is what these companies are doing. Who wouldn't want to get behind helping or like thanking first responders or like supporting the Paralympics? It's great and everybody can stand behind it and that's exactly why these companies are choosing these causes. And these companies are specifically not tackling specific issues that are controversial like women's equality or immigration because they know that they will get some backlash from some users. They would rather concentrate on something that everybody can get behind. So even if you're buying these sustainable brands, you're not outsmarting them. You're just another sheep. 
another sheep. Ah, it doesn't work. Another sheep person. It works with sheeple, it doesn't work with Sherson. So if you do follow these ethics and these guidelines, you're just going to be another segment that marketers want to target. And it really makes no difference for a brand. Actually, the more strict your rules are, which in this case are very strict because they're ethical rules, the easier it's going to be for marketers to target you. But I'm not against this, not at all. It's not like I'm fighting these charities or these good causes. It's just that I want us to recognize that it's a thought through plan to be or look more socially responsible. And we, as consumers, are the ones in the end who are paying. And these companies are just slightly shifting their marketing tactics. And it's not making that huge of a difference in the world. History time. Milton Friedman released a book in 1962 in which he states that the company's only social responsibility is to turn a profit and create value for its shareholders. This doesn't mean that greed is good, even though that's what a lot of people believe nowadays, but rather it is saying that that's the company's only social responsibility and it is up to the people to do what is good, for people to do the right thing. We're making the world a better place through Paxos algorithms for consensus protocols. And we're making the world a better place through software-defined data centers for cloud computing. A better place through canonical data models to communicate between endpoints. A better place. And no one cares what you think, Google. We know that you're going to change the world and you're the best company and you're going to erase evil. Their slogan is, don't be evil. Which really begs the question, why would they need to have it as their mission? This is similar to what Adam Smith believed in which people acting in self-interest actually help themselves but as well as society. So if corporations are evil beasts conspiring against individuals, individuals are just as responsible as them. History time over. So more and more people are actually hopeful and they believe that real change can originate from the private sector, from businesses. So society is increasingly turning to this private sector, these companies, to solve big societal problems which is giving these companies, which already have immense power, even more power because people rely on them to solve their biggest problems. But nonetheless, I think these ads are a bit ironic. In the end of the day, these companies are just trying to turn a profit. I don't want to come off as if I'm just critiquing these companies because at the end of the day, they're going to spend money on marketing no matter what. And even if a small portion of that goes to charity, it's somehow helpful. But we can't believe that these companies are going to save the world, they're going to change it, and they're going to do good out of their own willingness to do it. Because that's just not true. But, as I said, it's good that a small portion of that goes to charity. But there's one ad that I just can't get behind, and that's Stella Artois' ad. They highlight this problem that's a real problem of many people who don't have access to clean water, and then there's Matt Damon, who he earns a lot of money, I'm sure, but he says, he highlights the problem once again, and then he points us to a website in which we can buy this callus, this like Stella Artois branded callus. You know, you can choose one from Mexico, an India one, a Philippine one, and one limited edition chalice. I'm not sure how you say that. Chalice equals five years of clean water, which is great. I mean, five years of clean water, that's a lot. But it then says that $3.13 goes to help provide five years of clean water for one person in the developing world, which is great. You know, it, it's helping people. So, and it says that these chalices are limited to 300,000 units, right? Because they're a limited edition, super special chalice. So that means that in total, the donations that this ad can get, which, by the way, just one chalice cost $13, Amazon Prime. Out of those $13, $3.13 go to charity, which means that that's about like, what? A little bit less than $940,000. And this ad, this, 30 second ad costs five million dollars just to air on TV. So this means that the most money they're gonna raise is 900 something thousand dollars, but they're spending five million dollars just 
to put the ad on TV, which, you know, Stella Artois, that was really altruistic of you, very good initiative, you know, it really highlights how socially responsible you are as a company. If you like the content, smash that subscribe button and leave comments and comments in the comment section and maybe if you feel like it, even like the video. Peace.